Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video I'm going to be taking a first look at gold mythic Cesar Martinez who is going to be coming to the game as an event character. This event might have some association with Cinco de Mayo. We'll have to wait and see how that event's going to you know, unfold. But visually we have had a Cesar Martinez in the game before as Martinez 2K in the Skybound X, obviously Allegiance. And then we also had the OG Martinez, who was a confounding specialist way back when. Probably one of the first five or ten um, characters to be released as a promo a long time ago. This character coming out looks visually really cool. And honestly, the second I saw this character, I saw the weapon. And I got vibes of a, like a very, very famous character from a movie that I like a lot. If anyone knows the name of this movie, let me know. But um, the character's called Inigo Montoya. It's actually a really cool uh, movie, a really cool character. The, the, the sword looks very, very similar. If you look on the left-hand side, you can see there's mid-battle with a previous Cinco de Mayo character, which is going to be Raulito. Kind of interesting on the art here. I like the visuals a lot. He's also got a whip in his hands. Maybe some nods to other things like daggers and stuff like that. It looks really cool. If we look at the, the stats at level 1,440, limit break 3, he has got 39,686 attack. 26,457 defense and 22,047 HP. He's going to be a strong character with this sword. He's going to be of the support role. Gone Mythic, of course. And he's going to be joining the Holiday Heroes Allegiance. Taking a look at Cesar Martinez Adrenaline Rush, and it is called Battle Dance. It has got a recharge rate of 55 AP, which is pretty fast for what potentially could be an attack team character because he has got very high base attack all other teammates get camouflage and elusive for two turns two random teammates heal for 50 percent of their max hp those teammates get 100 percent attack down resistance for the rest of combat so a little bit of a strange one here he is a support character so he is going to be mainly doing support things for an attack team camouflage for every other teammate is very nice it would have been nice to just have camouflage for everybody not just other teammates just so that martinez himself gets the camouflage but it is the way it is elusive is also very nice it means after cesar martinez does his adrenaline rush there should be no excess ap given away based on the enemy obviously doing basic attacks or taking certain amounts of damage it should only be given away ap based on actual like signature move gain which is going to be slow down the defense team's ap gain quite nicely the two random teammates healing for 50% of their max HP is just a nice little bit of survivability. It's nothing too crazy there. The last part is quite nice though. Attack down resistance coming in. 100% attack down resistance for the rest of combat means there's obviously going to be no more attack downs come out from the defense team. You can bypass this as much as it is 100% resist. You can have obviously people with the control role reduce this down to 60%. But that's still more often than not you're going to resist it and you're not likely to have characters with combat mods resisting attack down that generally isn't something that people use so this is a pure bonus on top like i say it's just a shame that the camouflage does not go to actually martinez himself but it might we'll test it out but i'm pretty sure it's not going to so here we are on the attack team and I can just do the Adrenaline Rush. It doesn't have to target anybody because it isn't going to do anything to an enemy. I'll do the Adrenaline Rush here. And you can see some people get some heals in my team. But they obviously were full HP already so it doesn't do anything. But we are going to see some attack down resistance on all of my team. And this can last for the rest of combat which is very nice. Camouflage on my teammates as well as Elusive on my teammates as well. The way Elusive works is... When you do it like damage against an enemy, as I'm about to do, normally they gain AP from taking damage. As you can see, no AP was gained from Molly when I did my basic attack here, and it did 10,000 main damage, which would normally, you know, have the character gain a couple of AP, which is generally quite problematic for defense team characters because their AP is so low, they can trigger adrenaline rushes much quicker. So this isn't too bad once you get Cesar Martinez's rush off. Now, you may not have noticed it, but Cesar Martinez did actually get the camouflage and elusive. This is a big plus, obviously. Massive downside if he doesn't get himself. There have been characters in the past that have done camouflage to everybody else but themselves, and it's kind of written them off, honestly. Someone like Dale, unfortunately, was just not that great because of that. 
but this is actually very nice for Cesar Martinez in terms of the, the camo. This means he can do his Adrenaline Rush first and then you can nuke with someone else who has something to block payback damage, for instance. So this is maybe a little payback bypass. Also just general AoE damage from enemies. Anyone who has multi-target signatures or rushes, this will obviously stop multi-target potential. That's pretty much as simple as it works. Now, if we look at the upgrades, you can see at grade two, it gets an upgrade where the two random teammates heal for 50% of their max HP. And then at grade four, it gets attack down resistance duration increased to the rest of combat. So initially, it is going to be a number of turns. I have no, how, no idea how many turns that is. My guess would be like two or three. But this is only one copy, so I guess most people will get at least one copy and get this character to grade four or above before they start using them. At Limit Break 1, it'll get an upgrade where all other teammates get elusive. This is like, it's quite nice. It's not going to happen very early on in the fight, so it's not going to be too detrimental for the defense team. But it will stop some late game, like AP gain once Cesar Martinez gets his rush off. And it is a 55 AP rush, so he might get this off like turn two naturally. And then things could actually be quite good because then anyone on your team who has adrenaline rushes loaded up, those are going to do a lot of damage and there won't be any excess AP gain there, which is quite nice. And the limit break three, it gets plus 50% attack down resistance. So initially, the attack down is only going to be 50% attack down resistance for the rest of combat. Then it gets boosted up to 100%. I'd say this is quite important to utilize the attack down resistance. Although attack down resistance isn't like that important in itself. The main thing here is the camouflage and the elusive. And the fact that it still lands on the season Martinez is like, like I say, quite a nice thing. It didn't look good when I was first looking at the, the Adrenaline Rush information. But this is actually not too bad. It is more of a support role kind of Adrenaline Rush. It does fit his role, which is support. And he is going to be able to do that. And there's no way of blocking this. You know, there's not like he has to do an attack and could potentially get stunned in there. Some scenario where it doesn't work. He doesn't have to target anybody. He will just do it. A couple of characters will get healed. Everyone will get camouflaged and elusive. And everyone will get the 100% attack down resistance for the rest of combat. So it is actually quite nice when it goes off. On an attack team, you get to choose whether you actually want to do this. So you have any other ways to get past characters with um, payback. You can just do that instead. It's completely up to you whether you want to do this adrenaline rush or not. But like I say, it's not too bad. It fits the support role perfectly well. Now, the same could not be said for Cesar Martinez's signature move when it comes to it being what you'd regularly see on a support character. It is called Martyrdom. It has got an initial cooldown of turn one, cooldown of one turn number of uses unlimited. This fighter gets 40% halo for two turns and deals 800% damage to an enemy. Deal damage to self equal to all bonus HP and 50% of max HP if this fighter is in the front row take all bonus HP and 100% of max HP as damage instead so a bit of a strange one but we'll read through it obviously the initial cooldown of turn one is great quick cooldown of one turn is nice too this fighter getting 40% halo means that obviously after they do this they'll be able to pick themselves up which they're going to do a lot of damage themselves but they'll also do 800% damage to a single target this is deal damage too so it'll bypass any attack base reductions this is just worth noting it can be scaled quite heavily from combat mods it cannot crit so you want to just go with an all out attack on this character if you want to deal more damage here the deal damage to self is kind of strange and it's based on all bonus hp and 50 percent of max hp is cesar martinez's hp and bonus hp i'm pretty sure this is kind of strange, like I say, but basically the first part of this is if you don't want him to take himself out, you don't put him in the front row. But if you do want him to take himself out, you put him in the front row and he'll take himself out, but then he'll pick himself back up again the next turn with the 40% halo. This is going to proc his specialist skill, which we will get into later, but it will give AP to his entire team off of turn one. This is going to be very interesting. I'll show you how this is going to work when we do the, the little clip, but this could potentially be actually a very interesting kind of dynamic here. And I think it would have been better to have the and or situation when it comes to taking damage be deal 1% damage to himself or 100% damage to himself, just so if you didn't want him to do this at all, you didn't put him in the front row. And then if you did want him to do this, you could obviously put him in the front row. 
it doesn't seem too beneficial not to have him in the front row. Let's test it out. Okay, so here we are attacking again, and this time around I'm going to use my signature move on an enemy. And this should be pretty straightforward in terms of the damage it's going to do. It will do 800% damage. It will do trait damage because obviously it is a deal damage. So if I use a, the damage against a fast character, it should do slightly more damage. 800% will scale off of his attack massively. I can scale this up as much as possible. But this is less about the damage and more about what's going to happen afterwards. I will say I think there's a bug with this when it comes to the Halo. We'll talk about that in a second. But look at the AP when it comes to Negan, Glenn, and Lucky Wayland. When I do Cesar Martinez's signature move, we'll do some damage to an enemy and take them out. But we'll also take out Cesar Martinez himself, but give 50% AP to all of his teammates. This is because of his special skill. When he gets taken out, he gives AP to teammates. Now, he doesn't have the halo on him. So when, obviously, I take all the other characters' turns, the next turn... I'm not going to be self-reviving, although it does. It, it appeared very late. That is bizarre. Does he revive himself right now? That was strange. I'm going to be honest, that was kind of strange how that happened. But he did get the halo in the end, so I guess it's not a bug. I guess this is actually better this way. It's because some characters can remove positive effect from down enemies. And this would stop that from potentially occurring. So it's actually better that it happens in this way. Even though it is very bizarre. He will get revived. And as you can see potentially when he does get revived. Something else stuff does happen as well. We'll look at that a little later on in the video. So very strange on how the signature move is applying Halo. But it is working by the looks of things. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue. If we look at the upgrades on the signature move, you can see at grade 3 it gets an upgrade where this fighter gets 40% halo for 2 turns. At grade 5 it gets minus 1 to starting cooldown, which is nice and early on the upgrades. And then at limit break 2, it gets plus 200% damage. So it goes from a 600% deal damage up to an 800% deal damage. I would say this is reasonably important. You do want to deal as much damage as possible, especially for that first signature move. The other ones that will come down the line potentially could be a bit better just because of the fact that he is going to get an attack buff by the looks of things from other parts of his kit. Probably his passive, so we'll have a look at those in a second. But this is very nice indeed, very nice and very interesting in terms of how it's going to work in combination with his specialist skill. If you have any other AP game based characters, for instance, characters with Energize. He could team up with an Energize character extremely well. Also, someone who has Amped but doesn't have any AP gain in their kit, they would get the Amped bonus AP, and then they'd also get the AP based off of Cesar Martinez doing his signature move and self-destructing, and they'd have 100% AP off of turn one. They'd actually have 100% AP whenever Cesar Martinez did this. You could potentially line up very nicely with some characters. And there are some amped characters that don't give themselves AP. It's just more about getting a quick second turn rush. But this would be a guaranteed first turn rush, which could be very nice indeed. So like I say, very interesting on the signature move. Quite like a, a special character. I'm not sure why you wouldn't want to put him on the front row. Maybe the rest of his kit might give us an indication of why that might be. But I think potentially it could be based on how often you want to use his signature move. If you want to utilize his signature move more, but still want his special skill to potentially proc, maybe it isn't the front row. But I'd say, generally speaking, it's the front row is the big bonuses, especially as the halo is going to come in, even if it's a bit late. But it could potentially come in blocking any potential, like, cleanse or something like that, which is actually kind of nice. Like, like I say, very interesting. Do give me your thoughts on how this works and the kind of utility you think it could have. Now let's check out Cesar Martinez's mythic abilities. These are his passive skills. This is what's going to bring his kit together. We kind of know how his signature move and his special skill will interact together. But this could be very interesting indeed. He is going to be a support character, so he will have cunning. When attacking or being attacked, 30% less likely to trigger enemy weapon effects and walker effects. This isn't going to be too problematic for him anyway, because his signature move can't proc weapons regardless. Because it deals damage, it bypasses weapon procs. But this will stop him from procking weapons when he gets attacked. But off that first turn, he can't get attacked because he's going to be downed. Um, it's kind of weird there, but it is where it is. The next one's called Death Rally. 
When this fighter dies, 100% chance all the damage and support role teammates recover from all status effects. This is actually really, really interesting where you're going to do a full cleanse to your entire team. As long as Cesar Martinez can do his signature move off of turn one, no early fight control or you know infection or anything like that can actually occur against damage and support role teammates. This is very, very interesting indeed. The next passive is the one we kind of got a sneak peek at. It's called Postmortem. When this fight is revived, they get plus 200% attack for two turns. This is going to be quite nice because it could potentially boost his signature move for the next turn around. However, it might not last long enough because he's got a one turn cooldown on his signature move. And when you revive, it doesn't actually progress your signature move cooldown. This might actually wear out and not last long enough for that actually to occur. I'll test it out when we do the clips in a second, but I think this could potentially run into that issue. And the last passive is called Inspiring Presence. At the start of each turn, all adjacent teammates heal for 40% of their max HP for two turns. This is just very nice indeed, but again, this might not proc when this character is downed and then gets revived because they, they effectively wouldn't be alive at the start of the turn. So it's very hard to test this out. I'll do my best. But we'll see how this works. Very interesting on the passes. Mainly very interesting on the cleanse. The cleanse is the really good one. Obviously, when he obviously gets taken out, he's going to cleanse all his teammates, or at least all his support and damage roll teammates. But he should be able to take himself out very early on in the fight anyway. Let's have a little look and how, see how this interacts. See how long post-mortem obviously lasts when it comes to interaction with his second signature move. And then we'll try and see if with the heal's going to work when he gets revived. Okay, so here we are attacking again. And as you can see, I am using an attack roll character against Clementine. This is generally not a good idea because the damage roll characters will get um, dazed. As you can see, Negan has been dazed. Brawler Sandy has not because she has 100% resist. But Negan has. When I do the signature of Martinez, he'll take himself out and it should cleanse the daze. And here's the bonus with Brawler Sandy is, Brawler Sandy will get the Adrenaline Rush off of turn one, and I'll be able to rush straight away. So I'll do the signature move. He'll take himself out, do damage to an enemy, as you can see. And as you can see as well, Negan is fully cleansed, and he has his signature move available to use. So if I did use the Negan signature move, now he's got a natural turn two rush, which is kind of nice. Also, Sandy has a natural turn one rush, and the way her kit works is, she gains 30 or 50 percent sorry 33 ap back after doing her adrenaline rush and now she should be in a constant loop as long as she stays at max hp where she should be rushing every turn so the synergy between martinez and sandy actually looks pretty decent now if i do the defend action on the last two characters i hope negan takes some damage here just so i can see does the heal from martinez work for negan let's have a little look it looks like he is going to take some damage. Now, does Negan get healed up once Martinez gets revived? Or is the order of operations a bit out here? He does have a 40% heal on him. I'm not sure if that happened because of Martinez or not. I'm not sure where that 40% heal is, is coming. I guess it is coming from Martinez. He's the one who's applying this to the teammates. Because as you can see, Sandy's also got it. And she's got a, a natural rush again. Now, I don't have my signature move. This is what we want to test out. I'll just um, just do some defense on everybody. We want to see if Cesar Martinez can get his signature move again with this 200% attack buff. If he gets it next turn, then he should be fine. Let's defend. It has a one-turn cooldown. Did it count that turn that he just got revived as one of the turns? It does. So the next turn, he's now got a 200% buff on his signature move. I think before he was doing 95k damage. Obviously, it should be boosted up a little bit. Now he's doing 170k damage. He'll still take himself out, as it kind of should. Um, but he's doing way more damage now. And that should happen every time he gets revived afterwards, because that's how it works when it comes to his kit. So it looks like everything's working as I would have hoped. I was not sure about the 200% attack. Sometimes there can be some weird stuff happen when it comes to 
uh, the cooldowns on the signature moves, but it looks absolutely fine for Cesar Martinez. The only thing I would say is when he gets revived with 40% of his HP, he is a little bit susceptible to being taken out in that occasion with no Halo on him. So you do need to have some sort of sustainability on his team to get his HP back up just so he survives that one turn because that's all he'd have to survive for. Now, if we look at the upgrades on his kit, you can see at grade one, he gets the first half of Death Rally, where he gets 50% chance all damage and support role teammates recover from all negative status effects when he actually gets taken out. At grade two, he gets the first half of Cunning. When attacking or being attacked, he is 15% less likely to trigger enemy weapon effects and walker effects. And at grade three, he gets the second half of Death Rally, making a 100% chance all damage and support role teammates recover from all negative status effects when he takes himself out or when someone else takes him out. Moving on to grades four and five, you can see at grade four, he gets the first half of post-mortem. When this fighter is revived, they get 100% attack for two turns. I do like the fact that it isn't a chance to get 200%. It is just half as powerful at a lower grade. I like that. So at least he's usable at maybe like limit break one until you get him up to limit break two to get the full buff. That's a big thumbs up. At grade five, he gets the first half of inspiring presence. At the start of each turn, all adjacent teammates heal for 20% of their max HP for two turns. Moving on to the limit breaks, we have Cunning to come in at grade limit break one. When attacking or being attacked now, it's 30% less likely to trigger enemy weapon effects and walker effects. This is mainly going to be when he gets attacked. At limit break two, it's going to be post-mortem two coming in. When this fighter is revived, they get plus 100% attack for two turns. This stacks with post-mortem one, making it 200% attack buff. You saw that in action and it was pretty nice. Then at limit break three, Inspiring Presence two comes in. All adjacent teammates now heal for 40% of their max HP for two turns at the start of each turn. And this is just nice, especially teamed up with someone like Sandy. That team up actually seems very, very nice indeed because he's going to keep her healed up to make sure her specialist skill procs and he's also going to give her her adrenaline rush off of turn one and she's going to be dealing rushes every single turn and don't forget her rushes deal damage it can't crit but it also can't run into the issue of reduction on damage that some characters have started to bring in quite heavily so suddenly sandy's potential is actually pretty decent so sandy gang rise up for sure um, so I think his passives are very nice when it comes to Cesar Martinez. They work nicely with his kit. He has got a very bizarre kit. If you just look at it and just think, wow, this is really random. But it is actually quite nice. And the overall effect of it is very, very kind of cool. It's going to be very different to your kind of normal attack strategy. But it should be quite fun to utilize, as you saw. I was taking myself out, picking myself up. 200% attack buff. Teammates were getting loads of AP. AP manipulation generally is just quite a fun dynamic. Something that other games don't have so much. Although... Maybe they have like speed in terms of turns, but it is actually kind of fun how it works here. And like I say, the utilization with Cesar Martinez with certain characters, maybe characters that have kind of never even really been part of the meta could potentially happen against particular defense teams that are going to start popping up in the future for sure. So yeah, I like Cesar Martinez's kit and the, obviously the passives do bring things together quite nicely. Now we have seen it occurring quite consistently throughout the fight. So we'll just have a little read of his special skill. It is Retribution 2. When this fighter is defeated, all of the fighter's surviving teammates will immediately receive 50% of their max AP. I actually randomly was speaking about Retribution 2 in a stream, I think, recently, where I said people used to cheese it with low-tier characters, like five-star characters, when the Mythic Era first started. But it's going to be very hard to do it with a character in the Mythic Era unless they do what Martinez is doing very nice indeed i think this is spectacular when it comes to how the kit is kind of designed very different than what we've seen characters in the past which is very nice generally speaking people have passes when they're taking out and they give buffs it's not very good but this is going to be very good for martinez because of the how his kit works because of the specialist skill proc it is generally worthwhile to do this now the last thing to look at is going to be cesar martinez's weapon and it is going to be Cesar Martinez Savage Rapier. And it is got 40% attack, a huge bonus to AP when attacking, improved focus stun when being attacked, a 60% chance to stun the enemy and gain focus for two turns. And then the last slide has improved 1535, give 25% attack and 35 crit to this fighter and all adjacent teammates. This is very nice indeed when it comes to the buffs that he's going to be able to give out to 
teammates around him. He'll also buff himself with this. That's actually pretty nice. 25% attack is very good for Martinez. The improved focus stun is a bit weird. It's not necessarily going to be that great for him, but he potentially could have some very sneaky usage on defense teams. If you hide him behind a shield, he'll be doing self-destruct and then obviously turn two rushes for defense team characters. This is the only thing that has made him reasonably viable because if people start focusing him, it could be a problem for them. They get stunned, so on and so forth. But I don't think his usability is going to be super high, but it could be some very, very cheesy tactic that someone comes up with. Um, but it's very interesting when it comes to the weapon. The visuals, like I said, that Inigo Montoya weapon from the movie, one of my favorite movies of all time, it is the Princess Bride, if anyone didn't realize what I was talking about when I talked about it in my intro. Very cool movie if you haven't seen before. Quite an old one, but it's still quite, pretty cool. And one of the most iconic characters of all time has this weapon. Inigo Montoya, you killed my father. Prepare to die. But this weapon is very easy to upgrade. I would say 55% attack and you're done and dusted and you're gonna have a very heavy damage dealing weapon for Cesar Martinez, boosting his signature of damage up even further. So that's just a little sneak peek at Cesar Martinez who I have realized I've said his full name every single time. I could just call him Martinez as a lot of people would probably start calling him or CM or something like that, I don't know. Because Cesar Martinez just every single time is a, is a mouthful. But he is a very interesting character, very interesting kit. I like the visuals. I think overall kind of like cool character to have as an event character. This is kind of the event character we need where it's just kind of something special but not too overpowered and it's more buffing other characters that are powerful. And that's what Cesar Martinez is doing. He's going to do some reasonable damage but it's more about how his kit works when it comes to the self-destruct, his special skill, his synergy with other characters that exist right now and no doubt that will exist in the future. Let me know your thoughts on Cesar Martinez in the comments down below. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.